I was for research development at the part. But okay, the, uh, the waste management uh, involves number of steps. Collection, sorting, transformation, and useful, pro useful product. Now, each one has a financial aspect. And each one requires some skill. So, unless we make each step profitable to the doer, the waste management will not succeed. Uh, I have seen in my own township, today, uh, the municipal corporation of the Hedun, for example, pays 70 rupees per kg for waste collection. When sorters are there, uh, the plastics goes for some plastic buyers, either they convert it to diesel, and now plastics is being threaded and mixed with tar for road building. So that is one of the biggest use which I have seen in my area. And uh, the food processing, they are going for some biogas and some other aspects. Composting is a major area which is turning up. But the so probably waste management will become, will become an industry by itself, and I s foresee that uh, uh, there will be hardly any waste seen in time. And that's, uh, that's the what I'm seeing. So the waste management has a big business future in our own country. And uh, traditionally, People used to waste much more. Now, even food, an NGO in, in Big Bangalore, he collects food from hotels, from marriage parties, he sterilizes it and sells it. That gentleman has been awarded by Queen of England for his waste, waste man, food wastage prevention. And he has about 400 centers all over India, and the food remains edible fully tested and done only supplied to the users. There is a, uh, there is a initiative taken by some Bombay colony. They have put a big frigidaires and, and the looked after by colony people. The waste food is properly packed, which is edible, and kept into the frigidaires. Any needy person can come and take it. No money. <laughs> so these kind of initiatives will come which will make productive use of all the resources and products. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, I have to, I wish to talk something about uh, research, research and development and uh, skilling in that area. I feel that research itself is a skill. Doing research is a skill. skill. It requires knowledge creation, being knowledgeable first, and to see what are the gaps in that area available based on the literature survey. Then plan experimentation, develop some hypothesis, which gap you want one wants to fill, develop a hypothesis for his ideas, plan experiments, collect data to write means and write procedures, write instruments, interpret data, add to the existing wealth of knowledge. So this, uh, unless this process, this thought processes are given to people, people will not have a research aptitude, research mind. My, my feeling is that the, at the postgraduate level people, or a post, I mean graduate yes, level itself, yeah. we must start creating some idea what research means and how research is being done. Earlier it was conventional, convention, you go to a professor, he will guide you, we will the survey, kar ke laie, go and read the journal. But if somebody is made knowledgeable how to add to the existing wealth of knowledge, then probably his research aptitude will develop much better and he'll do something useful. Now, in the area of uh, research, and research is for the future, is an investment for future, and it is an assurance, an assurance for the future productivity and, uh, and benefit. Research and development is for the present how the present knowledge or inventions can be converted into an innovation and how the innovation can be made to create this economic and social effect. Then it becomes a technology. So 
so the research and development value change to technology uh, also there has to be sensibility in the people there are many people who are very good at research workers, but they do not know how to convert their invention into a useful product. So he must know what are the principles of innovation and how that innovation will meet some kind of a demand in the society so that he can convert his invention in his innovation into a useful technology. The I feel in the solar energy area, especially in the renewable energy area, the thrust area should be to increase the efficiencies of all the technologies. If I just increase the efficiency of a solar cell by 10%, I'll require 10% less land. I, I'll require uh, less amount of electrification and wiring and all those kind of things. There are a lot of cost savings. So the, the our uh, international Society Association of Alliance of Solar Alliance should f invest in, dev in uh, research and development for a high efficiency high solar cells, which is not only demonstrated, marketable to that level. Invest into a complete uh, assembly line for those systems. And Siemens has already developed a so solar cell in the lab, which is about 39% efficiency. Why not in, in the International Solar Alliance works with them or joins them and provides a, a better cell to the entire globe? So that will be the international out, outcome of the International Solar Alliance. We can always look to the poorest of the poor. We must have house, electricity in every house. That is all right. That's also important. But side by side, we must invest something for higher efficiency.